Hi everyone, Gareth here from the education team with Clever Touch. This is a promotional video showing you what, in my opinion, are the top 10 features of our Impact Max screen. Now I'm starting off here with a PowerPoint that I'm showing you, played directly via one of the apps that come with the screen. And it's an ideal way to show you some of the tools that I love that come with the Impact Max. So these are going to be 10 things that we're going to run through in this video. So to start off with, I've got my PowerPoint here. Let's say as a teacher, I want to start annotating on here. I can do that at any point because I have this lovely floating pencil tool and tap in here. There's another pencil icon and that will bring up my annotation layer. So it doesn't matter what I'm displaying on the screen from a connected device or I could be on the browser that's built in. But now I've got this lovely annotation menu here and I can start scribbling away on the screen. Don't like what I've done? Fine, let's just brush it away. Do I want a different colour? I can tap on here and cycle through various colours. There's up to eight to choose from and I can start to annotate on there. When I've finished annotating, I can save the annotations directly to the screen. I can QR code them to other devices wirelessly and I can even save them directly from my cloud drive if I've signed in. Turning it off, it means I'll be able to go back to my presentation and move to another page. Also with that annotation tool, we have highlighting uh, pens as well. And I would be able to start using those to highlight parts of the text that we're going through. So that's number one, the annotation tool. The second feature in the top 10 features on the Impact Maxes that I want to show you also lives in the floating pencil tool and you can access it anytime from this spanner here and it's the voting system. Now the spanner system when I tap on it actually reveals four tools. We have a spotlight tool, timers and a stopwatch as well. But the voting system lives at the end here and it will reveal a QR code. Now if you're trying to connect wirelessly with a device that um, doesn't have a QR code reader with the camera, you can just call out this string of numbers and letters here and type those into your browser and you'll be able to access the system too. Um, I'm going to use my iPad and the camera on there. So I scan and I tap and this will take me to a page where the hardest thing I have to do is type my name in. So I shall do that now and I'm signed in. I get a nice simple interface. Basically it's A to F true, false, and a big OK button. And there's a message tab at the top, more on that later on. Now, the teacher can enter the class when they think all of the students have entered. And now we can do things like get the students interacting in the lesson. So I happen to be displaying a voting question here of all of these five creatures on the screen. Two of them are amphibians, and I want the students to vote as to which ones they are. So you can test your own knowledge here. Now, this little menu comes up that I can move around. Um, so it's out of the way. And because two of the answers are correct, I'm going to allow multiple choice and begin. Only now can the students on their devices select their answers and hit OK. So I've submitted my answers. But how does the teacher know? Well, up here we can see the students' names would start to populate on the screen. And we can see pupil one of one, very nice small class there, has submitted answers so we can finish. And this then reveals a bit of data that shows how everyone voted. It's anonymous, so none of the students need to be embarrassed. Unless you're a really mean teacher, you can tap on the column and reveal who answered with uh, which choice. More importantly, though, you don't need to worry about that at this point. You can instead tell the students, tell the system what the correct answers were. So you can see, yes, it's A and D. We've, we've done really well there. And we can even bring that content back to explain. So an A is a poison, poison dart frog and D is an axolotl and they are the two amphibians. And we can move this content around and talk about it some more. When I hit the cross, that's gone, but it's not lost forever. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. We also have judge. So with judge, we can ask the students to vote. So I might say, I think amphibians are the only creatures that have gills. Is that true or false? Please begin. Mm. Now, if you've heard of fish, they also have gills. So I know that answer is false and I can submit that. The teacher can then check 
and we can reveal overwhelmingly the class think false and we can tell the system again that that was the correct answer and we can close that down. Now what about volunteers coming up to the screen? We have the responder. Let's pick someone from the class to come up and talk to us about frogs. Me, me, me. I've hit OK. I'm the first. I would be the one to come up and talk and use the screen. But also, we might be able to select students at random. There's a surprise. It's me. So we can use the selector too, and you can actually uh, set that so that, that it will pick two students, three students, if you need to pair them or group them. Now, we also have the message tab. The message tab is off by default to protect all you teachers out there, but if you're feeling brave, you can turn it on and the students can go to the message tab and that allows them to type answers, maybe to quick fire math questions or spelling sort of challenges and things like that. And the comments and answers will scroll across the screen with their names so that you can tell who's writing what um, as well as it uh, comes across. Now, I can leave this content behind and maybe even jump to my laptop or something and this menu will stay with you so the students can stay connected throughout the lesson it doesn't matter what you're displaying and when you are done with this and you want to exit before you do you can export a report and that will save an excel spreadsheet into the uh, files area of the screen that you can look at afterwards and because you've told the system what the correct answers were you'll be able to see which students did really well and which ones struggled. So that's the voting system. Number three of my top 10 favorite features on the Impact Max screens is the crop tool. This again we access directly from the floating pencil. It doesn't matter what we're displaying on the screen. If we want to take that content, chuck it into a whiteboard and start talking about it and annotating on it, this tool will help us. So it looks like a half pair of scissors. We then get our crop window. We can crop the whole screen should we want to. Yeah, let's do that this time. And I hit insert here and it will paste whatever we've cropped onto our whiteboard app. So whichever whiteboard I've set as the default, it will paste it straight into there. If I don't want it on the page that it first comes on, I've got a nice little paper airplane here. So if I add an extra page in and I actually want to move this to that other page, I can do it that easily. There we are. We've got my copy on page two as well. So the crop tool is a great way of being able to get our content straight onto a whiteboarding space so that we can start to dive into it a little bit deeper. The crop tool brings me nicely on to the fourth feature in my top 10 favorite features of the Impact Max screens, and that is our whiteboarding tools themselves. We have three whiteboarding apps to choose from on the Impact Max screens. So we have the legacy whiteboard that I'm using right now, and you'll see that there are some other featured videos that dive into that a lot deeper. It's uh, a 40 point touch screen it's really responsive you can set both ends of the the pens that you're going to use on the screen to do two different colors and thicknesses at the same time so it's a really nice experience on the impact max 2 as well depending on and, and, and how uh, hard you're pressing on the screen will decide on the thickness of the lines and so on now we also have two other whiteboarding tools we have palette um, and there uh, is a video that's going to showcase that in a lot more detail too. But it's a lovely art package where you can start mixing colours and using different styles um, of art tools as well. And we have our really useful, really universal uh, whiteboarding tool as well, Lynx Whiteboard. So just to show you where that is, I'm just going to go into the apps here and open it up. So Lynx Whiteboard is our whiteboard that you can have for free on all of your devices at your school or college or even at home. So you just go to your app store and you can search for Lynx Whiteboard and download it and create a free account. But you also get it as an app in our screens as well. So I could sign in or I could just start to create and we have this really great tool. Again, it will utilize the 40 point touch of the screen and there's a vast range of pens and maths tools and, and things like that. And definitely check out lots of our videos on Lynx Whiteboard. The fifth feature that I just want to briefly mention that I think makes it uh, a top 10 um, on the Impact Maxes is that in the finder area here, 
Yes, I can plug in a memory stick and I can access the folders and files in the 64 gigabytes of storage that you get with the Impact Mac screens, but I can also sign into my cloud drives, Google Drive or OneDrive, and I can add further ones in there as well. So you can sign into multiple cloud accounts on each account that you can have in the screen and therefore open your files directly in the screen from your cloud account. The sixth feature in my top 10 of Impact Max features is the browser itself because of course you're going to want to navigate the web and it means that you can leave uh, anyone that's teaching your room with the internet even if you're taking your device away maybe you've got PPA planning time. So it means that you can have the internet, you can bring up YouTube videos, you can go to websites that you use easily with the built-in uh, browser. The seventh feature that I want to briefly show you in our top 10 of Impact Max features is the Clever Store. You can access it from the main menu here. And on our Impact Max 1 screens, uh, people were creating an account to access it. On our Impact Max 2 screens, we've simplified the process. So if I just pop to apps here and open up the brand new Clever Live Store, you're just straight in to all of the many, many apps that we're giving you totally for free. And all you have to do is you can search for one or you can um, select one, have a little look at it, and then hit install and it will immediately start the process of placing that app onto your uh, Impact Max screen. Now, all of the apps in the Clever Store are free and they've all been cleansed. And that means there are no adverts, no pop-ups, no in-app purchases. They're just free to use apps. And then we can just open it up and start enjoying. The number eight top 10 feature on the Impact Maxes, in my opinion, is our wireless connectivity app, Clevershare. Here it is here. I just have to reveal the secret letters and numbers so that I can connect to this screen with my iPad. I'm on the same Wi-Fi, so all I've got to do is type in these letters and numbers and it's as quick as that I am connected now what I could do is I can desktop sync and look it's asking for permission so the students can't just take over the screen without permission so now I've got the screen behind me on my device and I can do it the other way as well I'm going to start mirroring to the screen and again permission mode has kicked in and now I just come in here and I pick the screen that I want to uh, connect to and you'll see in a moment that my device will take over the screen. Up to nine devices can be shown on the screen at any time. And what's really great is that up to 50 devices can actually be connected that you then scroll through in the uh, main interface to pick which devices are on display at any time. So really handy if you want to turn your device into a mobile visualizer or there are apps on here that you'd like to showcase on the screen. So my last two in the top 10 of the Impact Max features are actually only going to be available on our Impact Max 2 screens. Now, all of the other eight features I've shown you, I've been using the interface that's very familiar to customers of Clever Touch that's been on all of our Impact screens and, and a few of our screens before that. But I'm now going to change this interface into one that looks a lot more like our look screens for those newer customers that have uh, come across our first ever Google EDLA screen. So the Impact Max 2 gives you the option of choosing which interface you'd like to use. So let's access that now. All I have to do is go to the settings and I'm going to go to the personal choices here. Default home app. Now we're on the education, uh, the traditional uh, interface, but if I go down here, it's called Tiramisu for some reason, but this looks a lot more like um, our look screen now and what I can also make sure that I turn on with this screen if we just uh, pop to the settings is um, multi-window mode which isn't on at the moment so I'm just going to pop it on now and bear with me while the screen restarts to activate it. Okay so I'm back ready to finish off showing you what I think is the ninth in our top 10 features for the Impact Max screens. And this is just for the Impact Max 2s. Now our Max 1s and older Impact screens have always been able to split screen between two of the apps open in the tablet mode of the screen, the looks mode as we call it. Um, but now on the Max 2s, you're going to be 
able to have a multi-window mode, much as you can on our look screens as well. So whether I open the browser, instead of taking, or, or any other app, instead of taking over the whole screen, I actually get it to come up as a window like this. I can then decide, do I want to lock that into a corner or into half a screen? So we can do that. Or do I even want it to take over the whole screen? And instead of having to go to the home button and switch to something else, I can just drag the app down and it will mini size it again. And you can see that I can have multiple apps open at the same time uh, using this. So I might want to open up the finder so I can find various other things that I'd like to have open in the screen too. So it's a really nice way of having multiple apps open in the screen all at once. Okay, so number 10 in the top 10 Impact Max features is another uh, feature that's only going to be on our Impact Max 2 screens. Um, it's already on our look screens as well from CleverTouch. And it is the picture-in-picture -picture app. So I've got my connected in uh, laptop, but let's say I want that not as a separate source. I want it here amongst these other apps. I'm browsing the web. I've got a whiteboard open here. I can be making notes uh, on things but I also want to see what's on my laptop at the same time. So to do that, what's great about this screen is I can just swipe up and it will give me access to all the various apps that are in the background. And here it is, picture in picture. And when I activate it, it will then want to know what source am I trying to bring in. So um, we've got here um, a PC that's plugged in, but I want to actually go to my laptop. And you'll see as this comes in on this multi-window mode, we can see the top 10 tips that I've just gone through. And then I can take this and we can move it multi-window mode into half the screen there as well. So picture in picture is a great way of having your connected device content on screen at the same time as multiple other apps. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the top 10 features in my opinion of the Impact Max screens. Maybe it'd be great if you let us know what your top 10 features are. Thank you.